August 1939. The newsstands were starting to look different and very busy. More comics than ever on the newsstands, with a huge jump up to 28 different titles out this month, with the cover date of August 1939. And for the first time ever, there were 10 different titles on the newsstands at the same time, featuring superheroes, proving the boom in this new genre led by the popularity of Superman in the best-selling comic currently on the newsstands, Action Comics. This month also had three new number one series debuting. This was the third time ever in comics history that that many new titles debuted at the same time. Magic Comics number one, August 1939, published by David McKay Publications. David McKay now had three monthly titles on the newsstands. This issue is rated scarce by Gerber. Mandrake and Blondie did not get a cover appearance on the first issue, taking a back seat to Henry. The on-sale date of this issue is June 30th, 1939. There is a Mile High Pedigree copy of this book from the Edgar Church Collection. Henry is featured on the cover in this humor picture, and the Henry strip would appear five times in this issue. Other highlights include Mandrake the Magician in an eight-page story written by Lee Falk with art by Phil Davis in this adventure superhero strip reprinted from the Mandrake the Magician daily newspaper strips at the King Feature Syndicate. Popeye appears in a four-page story for writer-artist Elsie Cigar featuring the villain Tor. And Blondie appears in a four-page strip from writer-artist Chick Young. Mystery Man Comics number 1, August 1939, published by Fox Comics. This key issue is the first appearances of the Blue Beetle, the Green Mask, and Rex Dexter of Mars. And features a bondage cover by the famous artist Lou Fine. This would be a major key for the Blue Beetle's first appearance alone. He became Fox's most popular character and still appears in comics today under the DC Comics banner. But the also the issue also features the Green Mask, who would get his own series, and Rex Dexter of Mars, who would get his own one shot in 1940. This was just the second Fox comic title after Wonder Comics. The book that prompted the lawsuit by the publishers of Superman was quickly renamed Wonder World Comics. Mystery Men Comics number one was on the stew stands June 15, 1939. The dimensions of the comic are seven and a half by ten and a quarter inches. There is an Allentown pedigree, a Carson City pedigree, Wind City pedigree, and Billy Wright pedigree copy of this book. The Green Mask is featured on the cover, drawn by Lou Fine. The Green Mask story is nine pages, drawn by Walter Frem, featuring the first appearance of the Green Mask under his alias Michael Shelby. And this story would be reprinted in the Green Mask number one in 1940. Rex Dexter appears in a six-page story featuring the origin of Rex Dexter of Mars. The art is by Dick Briefer and features the first appearance of Rex Dexter, Montag Dexter, President Grover, and the villain Boris Thorax. And this story would be reprinted in Rex Dexter of Mars number one in 1940. How to Become a Detective is a two-page story in the Billy Bounce strip written and drawn by Norman Lee and features the first appearance of Billy Bounce. Chen Cheng is a six-page story drawn by Munson Paddock under the alias Cecilia Munson and features the first appearance of the villains Chen Chang and Wong. Hemlock Sholmes and Dr. Potsam is a four-page story drawn by Fred Schwab. It's a humor detective mystery story featuring the first appearance of Hemlock Sholmes and Dr. Potsam. And they travel to Old Man Tintype's mansion and try to figure out which one of the many men who claimed to be his son actually killed him. The Haunted House is a two-page text story written by Will Eisner, and this is the second Haunted House text story ever in comic books. Inspector Bancroft is a four-page story drawn by Art Franklin, featuring the first appearances of Inspector Bancroft, Inspector Granger, and the villain Stuart Bledsoe. The Coming of the Blue Beetle is the first Blue Beetle story, running four pages, drawn by Charles Nicholas. It's possibly been written by Will Eisner, but not confirmed. The Blue Beetle, as Dan Garrett, has his first appearance, as does the White Face Gang. This story would be reprinted in Blue Beetle number one in 1940. The Blue Beetle wears a business suit, mask, and hat in the story, with no apparent superpowers, and the story chronologically follows his first story in Blue Beetle number one. 
D13 is a six-page strip drawn by Bob Powell and possibly written by Will Eisner, featuring the first appearance of the secret agent D13, alias Richard Anthony. And this story would be reprinted in The Green Mask, number three, in 1940. Captain Danny Scott is a three-page strip drawn by John Lindermayer and features the first appearance of Captain Danny Scott of the Bengal Lancers. Saboteurs on the SS Regina is a six-page story featuring the character Lieutenant Drake, drawn by Klaus Nordling. It's the first appearance of Lieutenant Drake of Naval Intelligence and the villains Labardi and Kutch. Waco Kid is a four-page story drawn by Arthur Petty, featuring the first appearance of the Waco Kid and the villain Brazos Teal. The artist Arthur Petty, born December 26, 1916, lived until May 15, 2002, an American comic book and advertising artist best known for co-creating quality comic superhero character the Phantom Lady, and Atlas Comics' Jungle Girl character, Jan of the Jungle. He was also known for a stint as penciler of the superhero team, the Justice Society of America, for DC Comics. Wing Turner is a three-page story drawn by George Tusca, featuring the first appearance of Wing Taylor and the villains, The Chief and Clutch. Zanzibar is a four-page story, also drawn by George Tusca, featuring the first appearance of the magician Zanzibar and the villain The Top. And this story would be reprinted in Rex Dexter of Mars, number one in 1940. George Tusca, born April 26, 1916, lived until October 16, 2009, who early in his career used a variety of pen names, including Carl Larson. He was an American comic book and newspaper comic strip artist best known for his 1940s work on various Captain Marvel titles and the crime fiction series Crime Does Not Pay, and also for illustrating Iron Man and other Marvel characters in the 60s. His first Marvel story, A Tale of the Watcher, featured in Tales of Suspense 58 in 1964, included a special introduction by Stan Lee hailing the return of the Golden Age great artist. Tusca became a Marvel mainstay penciling series as diverse as Ghost Rider, Submariner, and the X-Men. His signature series became Iron Man, on which he enjoyed a 10-year run from issue number 5 in 1968 to number 106 in 1978. Smash Comics, number one, August 1939, published by Quality Comics. Bozo, the first robot to grace any comic book cover, wrestles with a nasty-looking gorilla on this cover. Smash would eventually showcase The Ray from artist Lou Fine and Jack Cole's Midnight. It's the first robot cover in comic book history, according to the Overstreet Price Guide. The Iron Man on the cover is better known as Bozo the Robot, and his owner, Hugh Hazard, is actually inside of him manning the controls. This is also the first appearances of Hooded Justice, not to be confused with the Watchmen character. This is the hero later known as the Invisible Hood. Also, Chick Carter of later Police Comics fame and Wings Wendell. This issue went on sale June 16th, 1939. The publisher was Everett Arnold and the editor was Ed Cronin. Bozo the Robot is featured on the cover in the science fiction cover. And it is possibly drawn by Ed Cronin. Espionage, starring Black Ace, is a nine-page strip written and drawn by Will Eisner in one of his early spy strips featuring Espionage, alias Black Ace. And the story also features Franklin D. Roosevelt. The Black Spot, a political group, takes over Argentina and conquers most of the rest of South America before Black Ace intervenes. This feature was continued from Feature Comics number 22. And Black Ace became Black X with issue number 6. Philpot Veep is a two-page story written and drawn by John Devlin, featuring the first appearance of Philpot Veep. Chick Carter is a seven-page story written and drawn by Vernon Henkel. This detective mystery features the first appearance of Chick Carter and the villain Van Dren. Simple Simon is a four-page story written and drawn by Ed Cronin. It's an adventure humor story featuring King Julius and Slaughterhouse. Screen Snapshots is a one-page strip written and drawn by Bernard Bailey featuring a biography of actor Mickey Rooney. 
Major Drake is Missing is the name of the seven-page strip in Wings Wendell. And this is the first appearance of this character, written and drawn by Vernon Henkel in another spy strip. Archie O'Toole is two pages, possibly written and drawn by Will Eisner, featuring the characters Archie O'Toole and Gil O'Teen. And this is continued from Feature Comics number 22. Hooded Justice is a four-page strip featuring the introduction of the Invisible Hood, written and drawn by Art Panagin under the alias Art Gordon. This is an early superhero comic strip featuring the Invisible Hood. First appearance, his alias is Kent Thurston. The Maharaja of Roz is willing to pay a million dollars for the return of a stolen sacred Indian necklace, and Inspector Blake calls in Kent Thurston because of his knowledge of precious gems. Donning a simple disguise, Thurston uses a gas gun to convince a culprit to cooperate as to the location of this necklace. Clip Chance at Cliffside is a six-page strip written and drawn by George Brenner, and this is continued from Feature Comics number 16. Captain Cook of Scotland Yard is four pages written and drawn by William A. Smith, a detective mystery strip continuing from feature comics number 22. Abdul the Arab appears in a seven-page strip written and drawn by Vernon Henkel. And this adventure strip features the first appearance of Abdul the Arab. Hugh Hazard and His Iron Man is a seven-page story written and drawn by George Brenner under the alias Wayne Reed. This is an early science fiction comic strip featuring the first appearances and origin of Bozo the Robot, Robot and Hugh Hazard. Mad scientist Von Thorpe sends his metal robot on a rampage through the city, leaving the police at their wit's end, so they call in Hugh Hazard, who manages to stow away inside the robot. The robot returns to Von Thorpe's hideout, whom Hazard manages to capture. Learning that the police plan a watery grave for the robot, Hazard rushes in to save it, naming him Bozo the Iron Man and using him as his new crime-fighting partner. Wonderworld Comics, number 4, August 1939, published by Fox Comics. This issue went on sale June 28, 1939. The editor was Victor Fox. This month is the first appearance of the FP Shield and the last appearance of Bruns Publications, Inc. There's a Billy Wright pedigree copy of this book. The cover art is by Lou Fine. This issue features a Ty Cobb sports album one-page story drawn by Charles Wilson. The Flame is a seven-page superhero strip written by Will Eisner with art by Lou Fine under the alias Basil Barold and features the first appearance and death of the villain Doc Soul. Armstrong the Lumberjack is a two-page story drawn by Bill Newcomb and this is the only appearance of this strip. Yarko the Great is an eight-page story written by Will Eisner with art possibly by Bob Powell. It's an early superhero strip featuring the first appearance of Rocco the Villain, Judge Lawton, Mrs. Lawton, and Gail Martin. This story would be reprinted in Blue Beetle number one in 1940. Shorty Shortcake is a six-page strip written and drawn by Jerry Iger. Dr. Fung is six pages from writer-artist Bob Powell. Features the characters Luigi Bishop, who is the villain who first appears and dies in this story. And there's a council of vampires who are villains who make their first appearance. Buddy Learns About the Pirate's Weapons is a two-page text story written by Jerry Iger with art by Lou Fine. Tex Mason is a five-page strip drawn by Munson Paddock under the alias Cecilia Munson, featuring the first appearance of the villains Rat Eye and Schmidt. K-51 Spies at War is a five-page strip written and drawn by Will Eisner, featuring the first appearance and death of the villain Senor Enza. Mob Buster Robinson is a four-page strip drawn possibly by George Tusca, features the first appearance of the villain Capino. Tom Barry of the Royal Mounted is a one-page story drawn by George Tusca, an adventure strip featuring the first appearance of Tom Barry and the villain Blackie Morgan. This is the only appearance of this strip. Movie Memos is a one-page strip drawn by Bernard Bailey under the alias Glenda Carroll. It's a non-fiction strip featuring movie stars such as Ralph Bellamy, Shirley Temple, Irene Dunn, and Ben Turpin. And there is a one-page promotional ad for Mystery Men Comics number one. 
Star Ranger Funnies, Volume 2, Number 4, August 1939, published by Centaur Publications. This issue went on sale June 19th, 1939. It features a bucking horse cowboy cover. George Filchok is the artist and writer for many of the strips in this issue. Highlights include Where Men Are Men, a one-page story written and drawn by Bob Wood, a Western frontier humor story. And Kit Carson in True Adventure Stories, four pages, written and drawn by Marty. All American Comics number 5, August 1939, published by DC Comics. The American Way is featured on the cover, drawn by Walter Galley. Red, White, and Blue is an eight-page strip written by Jerry Siegel with art by William Smith, an adventure story featuring Red Duggan and Bluey Blue. Mystery Men of Mars Part 5 is the Adventures in the Unknown title in a six-page story written by Carl Claudy with art by Stan Ashmeyer in this early science fiction comic strip featuring the characters Alan Kane and Elmer the Robot. The boys escape back to the ship with the help of Elmer the Robot, but the professor is left behind. The American Way makes its first appearance in a new strip, four pages written by George Kaufman, Moss Hart, and John Wentworth. And the art is by Walter Galley in this nonfiction strip featuring Frederick March. A Sam Harris and Max Gordon production, this is an adaptation from the play by George Kaufman and Moss Hart. Hop Harrigan appears in four pages from writer-artist John Blummer in his aviation strip. Scribbly appears in four pages from writer-artist Sheldon Mayer. Popsicle Pete appears in a two-page story, possibly written and drawn by Sheldon Mayer. Large feature comic, Series 1, Number 5, featuring Tarzan of the Apes, August 1939, published by Dell Comics. This oversized issue reprints the first Tarzan dailies from 1929 by Harold Foster, featuring the origin of Tarzan. This issue has 76 pages, and its dimensions are 8.5 by 11 and a third inches. This book is considered scarce according to the Overstreet Price Guide. Tarzan is featured on the cover and there is an entire issue dedicated to Tarzan based on scripts from Edgar Rice Burroughs with art by Hal Foster and Henry Valley reprinted from Tarzan Dailies at the United Feature Syndicate from 1929. Movie Comics number 5 August 1939 published by DC Comics. The editor at this time was C. Elbert, with Sheldon Mayer as the assistant and M.C. Gaines as the managing assistant. The Man in the Iron Mask is featured on the cover. Overstreet lists this issue as scarce. There is a Lost Valley pedigree copy of this book. The Man on the Iron Mask is featured in the cover with the characters Louis XIV and Maria Teresa. And it's a photos of Louise Hayward and Joan Bennett. This would later be reprinted in Amazing World of DC Comics number 10 in 1976. It's based on the movie The Man in the Iron Mask from 1939. And this movie is featured in an 11-page photo story featuring the movie stars Joan Bennett, Louise Hayward, and Alan Hale. The House of Fear is an eight-page photo story based on that movie, A Detective Mystery. And there is a one-page promotional ad for All American Comics. Funny Pages, Volume 3, Number 6, August 1939, published by Centaur Publications. This issue went on sale June 26th, 1939. The cover art is by Martin Filchok. Abdallah is a five-page story written and drawn by Craig Fox. And the superhero, The Arrow, appears in a six-page strip written and drawn by Paul Gustafson. Star Comics, Volume 2, Number 7, August 1939, published by Centaur Publications. This issue went on sale July 6, 1939. It is the last issue of this title. Art is featured by Tart Mills, Paul Gustafson, Carl Burgos, and others. The cover art is by Fred Schwab, featuring automobiles, fire hydrants, and water pistols. Homer Butts is a four-page story written and drawn by Paul Gustafson. It's a humor sports story. Jungle Queen is six pages from artist Claire Moe. Sources of Famous Quotations is a two-page strip featuring the characters Julius Caesar, Brutus, Cassius, Mark Antony, and Octavius. This is reprinted from Star Comics No. 1 from 1937. The Last Pirate is a four-page story drawn by Carl Burgos, his adventure strip. Diana Dean in Hollywood is a two-page story drawn by Tart Mills. 
100,000 reward for anyone who will explore this new planet is the title of the two-page strip in Dash of the 100th Century, a science fiction strip. And Speed Silver is a six-page adventure story written and drawn by Paul Gustafson. Amazing Mystery Funnies, Volume 2, Number 8, August 1939, published by Centaur Comics. This is the origin and first appearance of Speed Centaur. This issue went on sale July 6, 1939. The editor at Centaur Comics was Joe Hardy. Speed Centaur is featured in the cover, drawn by Paul Gustafson, in this early superhero cover, featuring Speed Centaur, and in the inset we see Phantom of the Fair. Uncle Joe Says is the introduction page written by Joe Hardy where he talks about Speed Centaur and the Masked Marvel found on the inside front cover and there is an illustrated promotional advertisement for both characters in other Centaur titles. Speed Centaur appears in a nine-page strip drawn by Malcolm Kildale and features the first appearance of the superhero Speed Centaur plus Real McCoy, a newspaper reporter. After an earthquake in a chain of uncrossed mountains occurs, destroying a city in the process, a lone trapper, checking his traps, comes across a youthful centaur, whom he takes back to his cabin. He learns the centaur is the sole survivor of the city of centaurs, destroyed in the earthquake, and so takes on the responsibility of raising the centaur and encouraging him to fight crime, which he does, teaming up with a reporter. The Hidden Empire is the six-page Don Dixon story written by Bob Moore with art by Carl Fufer. This early science fiction adventure strip had been published before, but it makes its first appearance in this title, featuring Don Dixon and Wanda, Princess of Feria. This is reprinted from Don Dixon and the Hidden Empire Sunday strips at Watkins Syndicate. Air Sub DX is a six-page strip written and drawn by Carl Burgos in his early science fiction comic strip, featuring the characters Captain Tim, Professor Grey, the Living Diamonds, and the villain The Conqueror. Phantom of the Fair returns in eight pages, written and drawn by Paul Gustafson in this early superhero comic strip, featuring Phantom of the Fair, Professor Carter, and Sir Conway. This story would be reprinted in Amazing Adventure Funnies number one in 1940. Keen Detective Funnies, Volume 2, Number 8, August 1939, published by Centaur Publications. This issue features the Masked Marvel, Dean Denton, Mastermind, and others. Overstreet notes that this issue has a nudist ranch panel with four girls. This issue went on sale June 26, 1939. There is a mile-high pedigree copy of this book from the Edgar Church Collection. Fingerprint Murder is featured on the cover, drawn by Fred Frollo. The Masked Marvel appears in a 10-page strip written and drawn by Ben Thompson and would be reprinted in Masked Marvel No. 1 in 1940. Single Series No. 9, Strange As It Seems, August 1939, published by United Features Syndicate. This features a John Hicks cover, story, and art. Strange As It Seems is the focus of this entire issue and is featured in the cover with art by John Hicks featuring the Four-Eyed Man. There is 65 pages worth of Strange As It Seems strips written and drawn by John Hicks. Strange As It Seems appeared as a syndicated cartoon feature in 1928 and became a familiar brand to millions around the globe for its comic strips books, radio shows, and film shorts created by John Hicks. At its peak, the strip was printed in 1,300 newspapers, and the cartoons competed in newspapers with the similar strip, Ripley's Believe It or Not. Jumbo Comics No. 9, August 1939, published by Fiction House Comics. This is the first full-color issue of this title, and it's the first full Sheen of the Jungle cover. She had only been seen in insets on the covers previously. This issue also features art by Will Eisner and Lou Fine. Gerber lists this book as rare. It's slightly oversized at 8 and a quarter by 10 and a quarter inches. The 68 page book went on sale June 26, 1939. At Fiction House, the editor was Malcolm Reese, with Jerry Iger as the feature editor and Will Eisner as the art director. Parts of this issue are reprinted from WAGS UK from Editor's Press, issue number 83 from 1938. Sheena is featured on the cover, drawn by Lou Fine in this early jungle cover featuring gorillas, rifles, and monsters. And Sheen appears in a 10-page story, goaded by the tales of a fantastic city, with art possibly by Bob Powell in this jungle strip reprinted from WAGS UK number 86. 
Peter Pop is a five-page strip, possibly written and drawn by Jerry Iger. The Hawk is 10 pages from writer-artist Will Eisner under his alias Willis Renzi. This adventure strip is reprinted from WAG's Australia edition, volume 3, number 26. Bobby is a short humor child story written and drawn by Jerry Iger from Universal Phoenix Features. Pee Wee appears in a short half-page story written and drawn by Jerry Iger, also from Universal Phoenix Features. Ken Hammond is a two-page text story drawn by Lou Fine. It's another early jungle comic strip. Weird Stories of the Supernatural is an eight-page story drawn by Lou Fine under the alias Kurt Davies in this fantasy supernatural story, which is reprinted from WAG's Australia from Editor's Press Service, Volume 3, Number 31. This title was formerly called The Diary of Dr. Hayward. Uncle Otto is a short half-page story written and drawn by Will Eisner. His humorous strip would be reprinted later in Spitfire Comics number 132 in 1944. Sport Shorts is a half-page story drawn by Will Eisner from the Universal Phoenix Features. Wilton of the West is a four-page story drawn by Lou Fine featuring the first appearance of the Crimson Rider. And this is from the Universal Phoenix Features. Crackerjack Funnies, number 14, August 1939, published by Dell Comics. This issue went on sale June 23rd, 1939. The editor at Dell was Oscar Lebec. There is a Mile High Pedigree copy of this book, a Lost Valley Pedigree, and there was a Dell file copy surviving. Red Rider appears in a four-page story written and drawn by Fred Harmon. Tom Mix has a four-page strip called The Payroll Bandits. Don Winslow of the Navy returns in a four-page story from... Lieutenant Frank V. Martinek, and he's also listed as the artist. And Speed Bolton Air Ace is four pages drawn by Al McWilliams. Action Comics, number 15, August 1939, published by DC Comics. This issue went on sale June 24th, 1939. The editor at DC was Vincent Sullivan. This is the fifth Superman cover ever in comics. There is a Billy Wright pedigree copy of this book. Superman is featured on the cover drawn by Fred Gardiner in this early superhero cover featuring fish and submarines and is tied for the first underwater cover ever in comics. Superman on the High Seas is the name of the 13-page Superman strip written by Jerry Siegel with art by Paul Cassidy under the alias Joe Schuster. This early Superman strip features Clark Kent, George Taylor, not named, Lois Lane, Holloway, Warren Kenyon, Big Boy Cheney, Marchetti, and the villain Muggsy. On assignment at Kid Town, Clark discovers that the institution needs $2 million to remain in the black and remain open. And as Superman decides that the newly discovered underwater treasure is the answer for the funds he needs. The last panel of this story is an illustrated plug for the Sandman and Batman. Action Comics at this time was the best-selling comic book on the newsstands. Odds and Ends is a one-page story drawn by Sheldon Moldoff. Pep Morgan is six pages, written by Gardner Fox, with art by Fred Gardiner, under the alias Gene Baxter. Clip Carson is a six-page strip, written by Bill Finger, with art by Bob Kane. Tex Thompson appears in ten pages from artist Bernard Bailey, featuring the first appearance of Gargantua T. Potts. From the Four Corners is a one-page story drawn by Sheldon Moldoff. And Sheldon Moldoff also draws Nevertheless It's True. Zaytera, Master Magician, is the 11-page story written by Gardner Fox with art by Fred Gardiner, and this is the 17th appearance ever of Zaytera in this adventure strip. Super Comics number 15, August 1939, published by Dell Comics. This issue went on sale July 7th, 1939. It features a Swimming in the Lake cover. The cover is drawn by Bill Holman. Highlights of this issue include Dick Tracy in a four-page strip written and drawn by Chester Gould in the classic detective mystery tale, and Terry and the Pirates in four pages written and drawn by Milt Caniff. Comics on Parade, number 17, August 1939, published by United Features Syndicate. This issue features a Tarzan cover with Little Abner and Abby and Slats. It's a mix of adventure, humor, and a jungle-themed cover, featuring not only those strips, but also Abby and Slats, Ella Cinders, Dynamite Dunn, Little Mary Mix-Up, Captain and the Kids, and Mammy Yoakum. 
The Beasts of Tarzan is a five-page story based on writing from Edgar Rice Burroughs. Wayne Webster is a three-page text story written by John Paul Fredericks with art by Paul Berdanier. And Alice in Wonderland gets a comic book adaptation in two pages from writer Olive Ray Scott with art by Ed Cookies in this fantasy supernatural story. Ace Comics, number 29, August 1939, published by David McKay Publications. The Cats and Jammer Kids are featured on the cover, drawn by Joe Musial. Jungle Jim is a four-page strip drawn by Alex Raymond. Prince Valiant returns in four pages from artist Hal Foster in this historical adventure. And The Phantom appears in four pages, written by Lee Falk, with art by Ray Moore in this early adventure jungle slash superhero title. Detective Comics, number 30, August 1939, published by DC Comics. This key issue features Batman's fourth appearance in comic books. Batman was a different character in his earliest stories than he became in later years. Batman was not so interested in taking prisoners or giving these lawbreakers a second chance in the early stories, which went on sale June 30th, 1939. The editor at DC was Vincent Sullivan. There is a Billy Wright pedigree copy of this book. The cover art is by Fred Gardiner. The Batman appears in a 10-page story called The Return of Dr. Death, written by Gardner Fox, with art by Bob Kane, with backgrounds by Sheldon Moldoff. This early DC superhero strip features Bruce Wayne, Mrs. Jones, Dr. Death the villain, and Mikhail, Dr. Death's assistant who dies in the story. Thought dead in the fire in his home, Dr. Death has survived, but is in need of funds to reestablish himself, so he sets his sights on diamonds owned by Mrs. Jones. The storyline is continued from the previous issue. The original script for the story has survived, confirming Fox's authorship. The original title of the story was The Batman and the Diamonds of Death. Also in this issue, Bob Kane draws Oscar the Gumshoe. Spy is a six-page adventure strip called The Dictator of the United States, written by Jerry Siegel with art by Mark Bailey, featuring the character Bart Regan. Larry Steele, Private Detective, six pages drawn by Will Eli. Speed Saunders, Ace Investigator, six pages from artist Fred Gardiner. And Slam Bradley appears in a 13-page strip called The Granville Insane Asylum from the team of Siegel and Schuster featuring Slam Bradley and Shorty Morgan. The Funnies, number 34, August 1939, published by Dell Comics. This issue went on sale July 14th, 1939. It is the last humor-themed cover of this classic early title. The cover humor title features two boys looking at a skeleton in a museum exhibit. There is a Tex Ritter six-page story drawn by Frank Frollo of the Western movie star. The Crime Busters appears in four pages drawn by Al McWilliams. John Carter of Mars returns in four pages based on writings of Edgar Rice Burroughs with art by John Coleman Burroughs in this classic early science fiction strip. Gene Autry appears in a four-page story. And The Black Widow is the name of the four-page story in Tom Beatty. And this is the first comic book character with the name The Black Widow. Dick Tracy appears in a three-page text story. And The Wonderland of Oz is a three-page story written and drawn by Walt Spouse based on the classic The Wizard of Oz novel. Tip Top Comics, number 40, August 1939, published by United Features Syndicate. This is the first United Features Syndicate title to reach a 40th issue. There is a Rockford pedigree copy of this book. Tarzan is featured with Hal Foster art in this issue. There are seven pages of Tarzan strips and five pages of Captain and the Kids, clearly the most popular strips in this series. Little Abner, Jim Hardy, and many other titles appear. King Comics number 40, August 1939, published by David McKay Publications. Popeye is once again featured as the cover story. There is a Mile High Pedigree copy of this book from the Edgar Church Collection. Adventure Comics number 41, August 1939, published by DC Comics. This issue went on sale July 3rd, 1939. It is the second superhero issue featuring the Sandman. The editor at DC was Vincent Sullivan. There's a Mile High Pedigree copy of this book and a Billy Wright Pedigree. The shark cover is by Leo O'Mealia. And this classic cover would be reprinted soon later in Double Action Comics Ashcan Number 1 and the Flash Comics Ashcan Number 1 later in the year. 
The Sandman appears in a six-page story drawn by Burt Christman. This early DC superhero strip features Wesley Dodds as the Sandman, also the first appearances of Janice Blue and the villain Wing. The Sandman rescues a girl reporter snooping aboard a ship dealing in illegal narcotics after she jumps overboard after witnessing a murder. Federal Men Return in a four-page story written by Jerry Siegel with art from the Schuster Shop, featuring the first appearance and death of the villain Morbrun. Rusty and His Pals is four pages written and drawn by Bob Kane, his adventure strip featuring the first appearance of the villain Chen Fu. And Cotton Carver is a six-page story written by Gardner Fox with art by George Newman, an adventure story which features the first appearance of Ruler of Loma named Alera. Popular Comics number 42, August 1939, published by Dell Comics. This issue went on sale June 30th, 1939. At Dell Comics, the editor was Oscar Lebec, with George Delacorte as the president, Helen Meyer as vice president, J. Fred Henry also as vice president, and Margarita Delacorte as the secretary. Gangbusters, Tailspin Tommy, The Mask Pilot, The Hurricane Kids, Shark Egan, Herky, Bronk Peeler, G-Man, Toby, Tex Thorne, ban are all featured on the cover. Tex Thorne is featured in a four-page story from Zane Grey in this classic Western Frontier strip. Tarzan appears in a three-page Jungle Tex story. And Gangbusters is a six-page strip drawn by Al McWilliams in this classic crime story, which would be reprinted in four-color, number seven, in 1940. And there is a promotional ad for the funnies. More Fun Comics, number 46, August 1939, published by DC Comics. This issue went on sale June 28, 1939. There is a mile-high pedigree copy of this book from the Edgar Church Collection. The cover art is by Craig Flessel, featuring a man and a boy riding a log in the flood. Radio Squad reappears in a six-page story from the team of Siegel and Schuster in their classic detective mystery, featuring a villain who is a sniper. Marguerite Daw is four pages, and this is the last appearance of this strip, which features the villain, the Speaking Frog. Sergeant O'Malley of the Red Coat Patrol is six pages from writer-artist Jack Leyte, features the first appearance of the Indian Black Hawk. With this issue, the feature Red Coat Patrol changes its name to Sergeant O'Malley of the Red Coat Patrol. And Buccaneer is five pages written and drawn by Bernard Bailey featuring the villain, Dr. Kilman. Mickey Mouse, number 47, volume 4, number 11, August 1939, published by Western Publishing. This is the first slit cover of this issue, and it's the last oversized magazine-sized issue. Donald Duck is playing a left-handed ukulele guitar on the cover. This issue went on sale July 14th, 1939. Famous Funnies, number 61, August 1939, published by Eastern Color. The back cover features the 1939 New York World's Fair. There is a Lost Valley pedigree copy of this book. This is the longest running comic book of the time and still one of the best selling comic books on the newsstand. The cover art is by Victor Pasmino, the humor cover featuring the characters King Cedric and Uncle Elby. This classic issue features early work of Jack Kirby as a writer and artist in Lightning and the Lone Rider, a one-page Western Frontier strip. And this is a promo piece for a new series which would begin the next issue. Buck Rogers appears in a four-page story from writer Phil Nolan with art by Dick Calkins in the classic early science fiction strip. And Jerry Iger gives us his short children's story, which he wrote and drew, called Queenie.